Hi guys, so often we get asked which product we should use when it comes to dry fly fishing. Now in front of me I've got a selection of things that are very much dry fly orientated and I'm just going to run through them with you and show you the pros and the cons for them and which ones that I use myself. Now when you're dry fly fishing one thing that you should always carry with you is mud. Particularly if you're using knotless tapered leaders, when you take those out of the packets all the oils and the greases and stuff on your hands they go on to that leader. And to make that, you know, make that line cut through the surface and to take some of the shine off it, which with a lot of the modern materials, they are quite shiny, I always carry around some mud. Now, there's loads of different muds on the market. Basically, it's a Fuller's Earth style mix, and all that does is it acts as a degreaser on your leader. It's a very simple thing to do. In front of me here, I've just got a fly that's tied onto a length of nylon. And once I've tied my fly on and I'm ready to go fishing, all I do is just take a little bit of the mud on my finger, and I'll just run that down the length of the leader and that just takes all the shine away takes those take degreases it takes that bit of grease off it and it just gives me much much better presentation and I'll do this fairly regularly because it does come off but it means that your attention to detail in the end ultimately is going to give you better presentation so once you've got your leader degreased Ordinarily what I tend to do is I'll fish the fly just as it is. I won't put any kind of um, mixture onto it and no floating. I'll just fish it dry out of the box, which for me is the best way from the off. Now once that fly's got a little bit wet or you've had a couple of fish on it, particularly if you've had a fish, I'll run it through the water a bit and try and get any slime off the fly. So here we have a little deer hair daddy pattern here, um, which for this time of year, absolutely perfect. Um, and you can see this is a bit of deer hair on the back and a bit of a foam body. Now if I've been fishing with that, I'm just going to dunk it in some water and get this really nice and wet. Now if it came to me trying to dry that fly off, you can see really, really just drowned. It's, there's no life in that. Even with a the foam, there's no chance that's going to sit on the water. So what I tend to do is I always carry around a little amadou patch. Now amadou is just a naturally occurring fungus that's really super absorbent and I just keep this on a little zinger on my jacket. So the first thing I do is I take that fly which is now absolutely sodden and I pop it onto that amadou patch and just give it a good squeeze. Now this will take the majority of the water off that fly and you can see when I open this up what a, how much water has gone from the fly onto this absorbent amadou patch. Now once I've done that, that's got the majority of the water off that fly but as you can see it's still a bit damp. Now what I would use now is a desiccant, a desiccant powder of which there are several on the market. So this one for instance is Dry Shake or the one next to it is a Hunt's Original. Now while this fly is attached to the leader, all I'll do is I'll open that up. Now you have got a little patch on here you can hook the fly onto but what I tend to do is just pop it straight into there and ever so gently, not without closing it because I don't want to crimp that, that leader, and then just give it a shake. Now this desiccant powder, you'll see in a moment, will take off so much of that remaining moisture and it'll come out covered in white powder and all you need to do then is just blow off any excess. That fly is now absolutely bone dry and that would be perfect to go fishing with straight away. Now that's great with this type of pattern but with other patterns for instance, I'm a big fan of CDC, I fish a lot with CDC. Here I've got a little CDC hopper. Now CDC is a fantastic material, it's the, the colder canard feather, it's from the preening gland on a mallard and it's very very um, buoyant so it's a great great lightweight material as well particularly with small flies. Now the problem with this for instance, going to get this one nice and wet again, every single tiny little CDC feather unlike a normal hackle where it's just a single fibre, with CDC every one of the little tiny fibres has more tiny fibres coming off it. So you can see there that's now absolutely drowned, straight in on the Amadou patch and give that a good squeeze to try and get as much of that water off there as possible. Now this will dry off quite a lot of that but you can see that CDC is all matted so I want to dry the rest of the fly off so back into the dry shake just gently give that a bit of a shake and out it comes. Now that will dry off the remainder of that fly. Now that CDC is still a bit matted and this is where things like this Hunt's Original comes in or one of the ever popular Frog's Fanny. Now this is a really really fine fine powder that comes with a little applicator brush inside of it and all you do with this 
is I'll use this to separate through all of those CDC fibers and bring it back to life. And that brush gets right in, separates all those feathers, and you can see now even the tiny, tiny little filaments on that CDC are all coming back to life and spreading out because it's all about getting that surface area which those tiny, tiny little fibers give. And then just blow off any excess and we're good to go with a really, really dry CDC pattern. So carrying around the desiccant shape, dry shake powders and carrying around the Frog's Fanny type CDC powder are really, really good. Now I know a lot of people when you get started, you'll take a fly out of the packet, tie it onto your leader and you'll just put some floatant onto it straight away. If you want to go down the route of doing that, it's not a problem at all. Everybody has their preference and there is no right or wrong. But there's lots of different um, preparatory mixes that you can put onto that fly to make it buoyant. Now I tend to use this less and less these days. I'll use it when I'm using something like a, a clink hammer pattern and I'm fishing it with a duo perhaps with a little nymph hanging below and I want to make sure that that dry fly really sits up in the water. Then I'll use something like gink but as I say there are several different ones on the market. Now this in cold weather you'll find it's quite a thick gel. Now all you need to do is just pop some of this onto your finger and you can see there and as I warm it with my body temperature it becomes more and more liquid and now I can just apply a little bit of that to the deer hair which is also remember a very buoyant pattern and there you have a really nice well prepared ginked up wing and the rest of the fly is bone dry having used the amadou patch and the dry shake that makes these flies go out there and float like a cork so it's not just a case of which one do I have to have can I just use this one? Can I just use that one? For me, I like to use a mixture. I always have the mud to degrease my leader to give me the best presentation. I always carry around the Amadou patch. Mine is so thin and used now, I've had it for about 15 years, but I use it so much, and that takes most of the water off. After that, into the dry shake, and depending on whether it's a CDC style pattern or it's a traditional hackle pattern, then I may well use the frog fanny as well to separate all those CDC fibers out and bring them back to life. So. This is a mixture of some of the things that we have to make sure your dry fly fishing gives you the very best presentation and the best chance of fooling those fish, particularly if you're fishing for wild fish. Any problems with these, any questions, don't hesitate to come into the shop or check out our website for more details. But this is a simple guide to what you do and don't need when it comes to dry fly fishing.